When you were eight years of age, what's your name? Anusha? Anusha. Anusha. Okay. <laughs> if you are going to get married, we'll cut the name into half and make you Anu. Because where will you get a Sanskrit scholar to marry you? When you were eight years of age, if I said, Anu, do you want to get married? <laughs> but nonsense, isn't it? I mean, it, it didn't mean anything, the question. Yes? The question didn't mean anything. If I asked you when you were six, it didn't mean anything. When you were eight, depending upon what kind of family, either it would be a joke or you would resist it or you would say yes without really understanding anything about it. If I asked you the question when you were fourteen, you would be a little shy because you're considering. <laughs> because the body has started growing in a certain way, hormones have started infecting the intelligence <laughs> and now you're thinking <laughs> When I ask you at eighteen, depending upon what kind of atmosphere you've grown up in, either it's a clear yes or no, not now or not at all, depending upon what's happened to you from fourteen to eighteen. Yes? So now it's good after passing all those stages, now you are asking the question yourself, not me asking you <laughs> or your parents asking you, you are asking the question yourself, do I need to marry? So the needs are there. Once you are a human being, there are physical needs, there are emotional needs, there are psychological needs, there are social needs, economic needs. All these things are there. People may not want to consciously think about these things because they think their marriage will become ugly if they think about these things. But anyway, it is there. If it's an arranged marriage, somebody else is thinking about it. If you are arranging it yourself, you are definitely thinking about it. Yes or no? All the considerations are there. So, today, for the woman I am saying, the world has changed to some extent. For social and economic reasons, she need not necessarily get married unless you just come with a body. Unless you just come with a body without a brain, for social and economic reasons, a woman need not marry anymore, she has a choice. She can take care of her own economics, her own social situations. It was not so. Hundred years ago, well, even if you did not have any physical, emotional, psychological needs, just for social and economic reasons, you had to marry. Yes? But not anymore so. That's a little bit of freedom. At least two reasons why you are getting married are out. Now you have to consider the other three. Psychologically, do you need a companion in your life? Do you need emotional companionship? Your physical needs, how strong are they? You must look at it as an individual. It is not a social prescription, everybody get married, everybody don't get married. It's not going to work. As an individual, how strong are these needs? Is this a passing need that you can easily go beyond? If it's a passing need, don't get married, I'm telling you because it is not worth getting tied up. Because with tying up, it will not just be two people, it becomes four, six sometimes.
I'm not saying it's wrong. Do you want it? That's a question. Each individual should consider this for himself, not by the social norm. Whatever may be the social trends, that's exactly what I was saying in the beginning. You are turning spiritual only when your choices are one hundred percent you, not because of other forces influencing you, your choices. Is this needed? Now, right now people have found other kinds of solutions in the West and also very much in India also beginning to happen. Okay, I won't get married, I will just live in, live in, live in. So live in, if you're just living with one person, anyway it is marriage, okay, whether you have a certificate or not. But if you're thinking you can choose your partners every weekend, then you are causing a serious damage to yourself because as your mind has memory, your body has a much stronger sense of memory. The reason why we take you into these kind of spaces, even if you do not understand anything intellectually, why they constantly created spaces of energy and spaces of other kinds of possibilities? Because the body will imbibe and retain it. Body has a very strong sense of memory. Body will imbibe and retain it. You may forget the Himalayas, the body will not forget the Himalayas. Always it will remember. Mentally, you may get dementia and you may lose all memory, but the physical body will carry it on. It will not give up. Just because you lost your memory, you are not going to lose your karmic substance. So physical intimacy always is… It, this is… It, traditionally this is called runanabandha. It develops a deep sense of memory and too many memories like this leads to a certain level of confusion and a certain level of misery. You can clearly see this, you can very clearly see this. People who are loose with their life, they will never know any real sense of joy. They are only like that. You, you please watch this carefully around you. It is clearly there. People who are very loose with their physical body, they will not, they can never laugh totally, nor can they cry totally, they will become like this. Because confusing memories in the physical body in one lifetime will create a lot of impressions like this. So, that is not a solution at all to handle these needs. So, either you go into marriage or you don't go into marriage, that you go beyond these needs. But this is something individually you have to look at, how strong is my need. If you want to look at that with clarity, without social influence, it's always best. Let's say you take a month off, stay in ashram, just meditate. Bring… when you make decisions, you must be in a state of clarity, not influenced by anybody. Not by the guru, not by the society, you are not influenced by anybody. Bring yourself to a certain state of clarity. In that clarity, see what is your need, how strong is your need really. If it is not necessary, that's it, once you make a decision, don't look that way. If you make a decision to go that way, don't look this way, just do that. One of these things you must do, if you hang around in between, you will remain in a constant state of confusion, this or that, which is the best thing, which is the best thing, there is no best thing. Wherever, whatever you choose to do, if you put your heart and soul there and make it happen, that's a great thing, it's not the best thing still because there is no best thing in the world. If you are really putting yourself into what you are doing, it's a great thing, but it's not the best thing. Best involves other people, isn't it? Best means you have the best deal means you are better than everybody else. It involves other people. That's a self-defeating process. The moment you try to do the best, you are on a self-defeating process. I am doing a great thing. This doesn't involve anybody. I am just walking on the street, I think I am doing a great thing. I am not doing the best thing. The yogi is living in the Himalayan cave, he is not doing the best thing, he is doing a great thing for himself. Somebody is married, happily living with his family, he is doing a great thing, he is not doing the best thing. So don't try to do the best thing, your life will go waste because it involves the whole world. That means you must be the Alexander the Great to do the best thing. And of course he didn't do the best thing, nor did he do a great thing. 
because he is unfit for anything else, we said he is great and dismissed him off. <laughs> because he doesn't get into any category of being human. <laughs> really. So, this is something that will bring a certain space of clarity into you and make your decisions. Once you make a decision, there should be no looking because nischala tattvam jivana mukti. If you, once you, whatever you do, you just sweep the floor with total involvement. Every day you sweep the floor, you will get enlightened. I'm not joking. That's all it takes. But the problem is the man who is sweeping the floor wants to become something else. That something else wants to sweep the floor. That something else wants to do something else. This something else wants to do something else. Nobody is doing what they are doing with absolute involvement. That's the whole problem. Whatever you are doing, if you do it with absolute total involvement, if there is a nischala tattvam, that you are on means you are on, just that. That's what the driving does to you on Himalayan roads. That's what checking also, mountaineering does to you. Now when you are doing that, you can't be doing something else. If you do something else, that's the last thing you will do. <laughs> really? If you are keeping your vehicle really fast on this vehicle, that's the only thing you are doing. You try to do something else, that will be the last thing you do. So, live your life like that, whatever you are doing, that's all you are doing. Absolutely. If you have that nischala tattva, whatever you do, it's fine. But every day shifting, shifting, shifting. People who are married for fifteen years, now they're thinking, maybe I should have taken brahmacharya. People who have been brahmacharis for ten years, now they're thinking, maybe I should have gotten married. This is an endless waste of life. 